are featuring the founder of Shed Defender, who's going to share how he identified a potential problem, how he solved it, and turned it into a business that rakes in $150,000 a month. Today, he will share how you too can leverage Amazon FBA and build your own brand and get noticed. Also, what their online growth strategy is and what challenges they face working with Amazon FBA. Lastly, he will share with us what their experience was like on Shark Tank and how that impacted their business. It just went viral. I woke up and I had like 100 sales. We did 1.4 million gross. It's great brand awareness. People mm -hmm. see your product, sales go up. But yeah, we get a real good return on ad spend through mm -hmm. Amazon, which is nice. The platform is so big, you're just losing money if you don't. That is a leash you guys need to have in your arsenal. Can you walk us through just a quick evolution of getting a new product into mass production? That makes or break your product. They do it for you. I mean, you send your product in, you don't have to worry about shipping and returns. It's all automated. All right, you guys, we are here with Tyson, the founder of Shed Defender, um, and we'll just dive straight into it. Tyson, tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and how you came up with this idea called Shed Defender. Well, this is Harley, my St. Bernard, and uh, Harley. I got her in college, and I got tired of people complaining about the shedding. And everywhere I went, she just would have balls of hair everywhere. So I searched and searched and searched, and there's no products out there like it. So I came up with the idea to wrap her up in a shirt and contain the shedding. That's it. Uh, for the most part, yeah, there's nothing out there. So it's kind of easy concept for me to think, okay, I think this will be good for many other dog owners out there because it's such a big problem. Right, and then it just kind of evolved into it what did. we see here. Yeah, uh, my mom actually sewed the first prototype Mm -hmm. uh, started small, then found a seamstress off Craigslist, and then a few years later, we had a working product. So let's talk about expense a little bit. What what was your initial investment into starting Shed Defender? How much money did you have in hand well before Shark Tank? What was the biggest expense at that point? How it started is we kind of went viral overnight, so I didn't have any money invested in it. It just went viral. I woke up and I had like 100 sales. Interesting. Um, yeah. With the, with the model that your mom sewed first and then... Yeah. Mm. I was trying to sell online. Um, it was pretty much a passion project. So I was selling maybe five a month with this little seamstress who could make mm. one a day maybe. And then in one viral video and next thing I had hundreds of orders. Interesting. So I had to get a small loan from my parents to pay for, to get the fabric, find a manufacturer in San Francisco and fulfill upwards of a thousand orders within like the next two months. Okay. So let's talk about what cost the most within those first two months. Is it, is it manufacturing and fabric? Okay. So I think um, the first initial loan from my parents was about 30, I think 30,000. Um, and then throughout the first year, all in all, I think it was roughly 140,000 just to keep up with demand since mm -hmm. we just, you know, overnight had all these orders. So yeah, started with that. Then after that, we just kind of grew organically. What was your revenue in 2020 and, uh, you know, break the revenue down from us in terms of product wise? Yeah. So last year we had a pretty good year, even due to COVID, um, okay. you know, complications and everything. Uh, we did 1.4 million gross. Nice. Um, yeah. It was I mean, it's gross, but 20% year over year growth, which is great. And how much of that came from Amazon? Probably about 65%. And then the rest? And the rest is our site. Uh, we sell on Chewy.com. Okay. And then we have some uh, small wholesale businesses, mom and pop shops that we go to. Okay. Talk about Shark Tank. How did that impact the business overall? Uh, people, do people recognize you on the street and say, oh my gosh, that's Tyson, we saw him on Shark Tank. How's life now after, after that experience? Yeah, I thought they'd recognize me after Shark Tank, but uh, <laughs> no, they recognize her, so okay. she can get some recognition, nice. but uh, not me yet. But yeah, it definitely helped. Um, it was a great experience. It's great brand awareness. People mm -hmm. see your product, sales go up. It can be somewhat short-lived, but you know, people forget about it, but it keeps re-airing maybe like every right. four to six months. So you still get that continual uptick, which is great. As far as revenue though, uh, so when did you go to Shark Tank? What year? We were uh, 2018, 2018, season 10. And at that point, were you selling this exact product already? Yeah. So we just had the one product. Now we have kind of a whole line of products. Mm -hmm. But it was just the one product. We were about a year and a half in. So we're still kind of in our baby phase. Mm -hmm. But we still have good numbers and the sharks are all impressed. Why don't you walk us through the numbers? 
Uh, we've done 1.2 million in sales. Oh, no, good for you. Yeah. What? How do you break down the profit margins? Like if you take uh, this product here, right, which is your best seller, just the black shed defender. Yeah. What does it cost you to make? And uh, what's... so any of the roughly, we have nine different sizes, so they do vary okay. quite a bit. So from the mini size up to the giant, they can range from you know anywhere from maybe seven dollars, you know, upwards to fifteen. To manufacture? Yeah. Okay. Um, sometimes it can be more expensive. We do. Uh, produce domestically sometimes too, so those costs are higher. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, all in all our margins are, you know, anywhere from 40 to 70%, wow. just depending on what sales channel we're at, either our nice. site, Amazon, or wholesale. What's the strategy for growing your business on Amazon? And tips, tricks, anything you can share with us? So Amazon, the main thing is you definitely want to be on FBA so you can get you know quick shipping and they can handle all that. So I mean, that's definitely, I would say number one. Also uh, reviews, that makes or break your product. And that can be the hardest thing to do because there's a lot of things in place. So you know, Amazon policy, you don't abuse it by paying for reviews and things like that. Some okay. overseas companies do. So reviews are the best way to do it. So there's a couple, there's a program called Vine and you can, um, for new products. So you can give out free products to people and they'll review it for you, which helps you get um, at least, you know, anywhere from five to 20 reviews, but even that alone can help you rank better. Cause that's what Amazon is. It's just a crazy algorithm that goes with reviews, rank, price, product imaging, getting your brand store page up, mm -hmm. um, just to make it look as professional as possible. And all those play a role in like how your product gets ranked in Amazon search. Besides Vine, are you using any other tactic to get more reviews? Um, direct customer re you know, communication? Or... You're not allowed to technically. Um, they do have a new feature that you can email them. There's a button you can push actually that says uh, request a review from them. But yeah, there's not a whole lot you can do necessarily, uh, just good customer service and having a good product and just hoping they, you know, I don't get frightened one. I don't get the fact that you can't ask your customer to review your, I, I don't, that doesn't People sense. have just abused it. Mm -hmm. You know, anything from, you're not supposed to use their address, but some people send postcards like write a review, but they don't want the customer to be bothered. Um, there's too many people abuse it. And they want to be in between you and the customer, right? Yeah. I mean, to, to some extent. Okay. Yeah. So it can be tough, but yeah, reviews is, is definitely the thing. And then for us, expanding our product line was big. Mm -hmm. uh, one product is great, but you know, the more products you have, the better it's going to go. Because a lot of times when we launched our leash now, it says frequently bought together and it's I see. our shed defender plus the onesie or the shampoo. So you can get bundle deals and uh, they kind of piggyback off each other. That makes sense. Well, can we go try that uh, new product that you have yeah, developed? Yeah, I'd love okay. to show you how it works. All right, let's go find the big dog. All right. What's his name again? Her name's Harley. Harley, okay. She's my 12-year-old St. Bernard. Man, you've had her for a long time. She's the original model. That is awesome. Hey, Harley. Hey, girl. We're gonna we're gonna do a test on you and show our uh, audience okay. how this new collar and development works. So it works. just attaches to any normal collar. Um, and this guy's all excited just to be in the shot here. So you wrap it up. And you can move the magnet anyway, yeah, right? Yeah, they okay. slide. They so slide. you can adjust. If it's a little tight, you can add a little bit of room. Nice. And then... So all magnets slide, right? There's none that it's permanently fixed the or is one? The two middle ones slide. Gotcha. Well, but yeah, once it's on, good to go. She can wear it. That is super convenient. Yeah, it fits. And then when you're done, say you need it, we're walking down the street, another dog comes up. You can just simply unravel it, that, and you're good to go. That is a leash you guys need to have in your arsenal. That is for sure. Pretty excited about it. When do you expect to sort of release it to retail um, online? Hopefully around August is kind of our tentative date to release it. Okay. Tyson, tell us just a little bit about your Shark Tank experience. Our audience love to hear, because everyone has a different experience right. getting on it. Some take two years to apply, others get a phone call. 
Uh, what was like for you? What did you do to prepare? How long did it take from the moment you got the call? Just everything, anything. Just share the, all the fun. Yeah, I mean, I've been told to try and apply for years and years and years, but I just didn't think I was ready yet. And then we were actually lucky enough for the producers, one of them, to reach out to us and ask if we wanted to actually apply. So they okay. helped us go through and make the video. So they kind of held us held our hand through the whole process, which was great. Kind of kind of got lucky there. Yeah, I guess kind of cut in line. I don't know, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it was it was great because uh, we weren't sure if we we're gonna do it on our own. Were you camera shy? What, what, did you, what did you do personally to prepare? Yeah, I mean, definitely we prepared a lot thanks to Casey, my sister-in-law. We did a lot of preparation for it. Yeah, we even hired like a professional like media person to, like you help did. us okay. out and train. So we were over prepared, but that definitely helped us. So there's mm -hmm. no hesitation, no pauses. We knew the numbers and you know, it turned out we got a deal. So it was definitely well worth doing all that practice and preparation. Let's talk about F FBA on Amazon, right? Because mm -hmm. you're, you're, what's the percentage of your business on FBA? They probably do about, probably 65%. So it's a big portion of our business. It is, okay. And people just feel like they can trust Amazon and order through Prime and get it, you know, in a day. So they take 15% off just across the top. Okay. Um, They're doing all your fulfillment. No, I have a fulfillment center and then they, I send the orders or bulk orders into Amazon and then they fulfill the orders. Okay. So they have it on stock. So essentially you have, you have two fulfillment centers, mm -hmm. Amazon and my own. But so they, you pay the 15%. And then you also pay just the normal shipping fees, maybe $3, $4 per unit as well. Okay. What else can you share about FBA? The, the pros, the cons, what do you see changing or not changing? Yeah. Let's just dive into that a little bit. I mean, honestly, I was kind of weary of getting into it a few years ago because you know the margins do go down a little bit, but the platform is so big, you're just losing money if you don't. So it just, it helps the advertising. I can get in front of the right people with their own advertising on their platform. It just, it's for me, it's just more eyes, more mm -hmm. visits to, you know, our store on there and people, some just go towards Amazon to buy things now. Right. So, you know, we'd like to mix it up a little bit more and get more people on our site, but you know, there's only so much you can do. Everyone's curious about what happens after you get the deal or didn't get the deal. What happened with you as far as deal making on Shark Tank? Yeah, so on the show, we did get three offers. Mm -hmm. uh, we ended up going with Lori. Deal. Oh, yes, great. We'll take it. Congrats, guys. <laughs> All right. And so we got a deal on the show. You know, you shake your hand and everything. And then eventually we both kind of mutually decided it wasn't necessarily a good fit for us. Okay. Um, we wanted more of a strategic partner who's going to be more involved in the business. So we decided not to do it and then eventually found uh, private equity a few months later afterwards. Which, what, how, where did that happen? I mean, um, we how went did you get to exposed? a pet summit event in Austin. So it was just a place to meet private equity or um, distributors and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And one company um, that we reached out to was interested and um, did they notice you or recognize no, you? No, they, they hadn't actually out? watched the Shark Tank, but knowing we were on it is always something that piques their interest. You know, they know that we got on for, you know, a reason, we're a legitimate company. Um, and you know, gave them their number, our numbers, and like I said, they were impressed. And then it took about a year, but we finally signed them on, and they've helped us kind of grow the brand and help with a second strategic partnership that you know we were looking for. Nice. What are some challenges in running a business on Amazon? I mean, it's an ever evolving, ever evolving world, right? It is. So keeping up with the algorithm, you know, from advertising to ranking and search is probably the biggest one because nobody really knows how it works. Um, one day it's this, the other it, day it's it, that. It is. Or? And so you can hire some marketing agencies that are professionals and they'll tell you this, but then you can hear another thing. So yeah, just evolving with Amazon and how it, you know, ranks and all that stuff is probably maybe the biggest challenge yeah i just wonder what you can do to research all that and be on, on top of it you know what i mean like is there some is there anything you can do i mean yeah. what, what are you doing it's hard there's actually a couple apps that you can get that show certain attributes and search results search terms and stuff like that one mm -hmm. called jungle scout that's okay. really good so okay. it's an add-on um and then you can also investigate other competitors products and kind of compare it to yours as well okay and just 
basically have a great product. Make sure you have a great service. Yeah, make sure your search terms are online. It can kind of help you grade and evaluate your listings. Mm -hmm. And you just hope they know what they're doing. But usually the uh, Jungle Scout's a really good one. That's pretty reputable. Okay. How do you market your uh, Amazon site and also what do you do to expose your site as well? What tips and tricks? Yeah, so Amazon, we actually have a agency based out of India. Um, they're oh, wow. kind of ex-Amazon employees. So they help me with all these sponsored ads on Amazon. So you do run ads there? Yeah, we do. Uh, How much are you spending? It's crucial. We do right now roughly, I think our budget's like 6,000 a month okay. at the moment. But yeah, we get a real good return on ad spend through mm -hmm. Amazon, which is nice. And then with our site, we have an agency that does our Google paid search and then our social media site um, or ads, which is usually just a lot of brand awareness and then retargeting. You know, if they saw our site, um, they'll get another ad. So they come back and buy with a discount or mm -hmm. things like that. Is that, it, how much is that in addition to the six on Amazon that goes there? You know, all in all, we spend our budgets between like 15 and 18,000 a month. Wow, okay. Yeah. Just to get the product brand out there. Yeah, and especially with our new products, we're really trying to push the brand awareness and make sure people know about it. So yeah, the returns, returns there. So it's worth spending that money. Let's touch on real quick on how to identify demand for new products, right? especially in your line of industry. Right, so for us, some of it was just getting feedback from the customers. You know, with the original Shed Defender, um, like people wanted one so they could go outside. So we created the sport, mm -hmm. um, so the dogs can use the bathroom. Other ideas just yeah, come from just looking at the market, uh, seeing what's trending. That's why we kind of came up with the soft shoes. Mm -hmm. It's like the fastest little niche growing in the pet industry. They're just getting bought up by everybody. Um, so just following trends is probably the main thing and yeah, customer feedback, reviews, stuff like that, just kind of gauging on what the customer would like and incorporating it into your whole you know, blend of products. Do you have a system or have you done in the past where you did reach out to customers and said, hey guys, give us feedback, constructive feedback, what works, what doesn't, or we, did they do that by themselves? We have in email marketing, um, software that does like have a little survey after each purchase. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, and one thing we use is Instagram when we're trying to figure out what new patterns or colors to do for the onesies. Okay. Um, we give them a list of maybe, do you, would you guys like to see camo or a festive color or something? So they would kind of like get their feedback and gauge it based on the survey on, you know, an Instagram story or something like that. Okay. Yeah, so follow trend lines and probably customer feedback is the two pillars. Yeah. Uh, let's get some blitz questions with Tyson. Tyson, if you could win a lottery today, I mean a fortune, it would last you a lifetime. Would you give this business up? No, I'd advertise the hell out of it and just grow it as fast as I could and then maybe sell it. Man, a true entrepreneur right there. What was the first thing that pushed you to start working on this business? Um, this baby right here, tumbleweeds over <laughs> here. Okay, uh, what's one of your hidden talents? Can you show us, can you tell us? You know, I can't show because I my hidden talent is just getting lucky. I'm just a lucky individual, I guess. <laughs> okay. What's one of the news that you would like to wake up tomorrow? That I won the lottery. You won the lottery, okay. When you are not running a business, what would you find, what would we find you doing? Um, either going to the gym or ideally golfing. Okay. I like this question. It's kind of a weird one, but let's say if aliens show up tomorrow and they shut every business down and they come to your doorstep and say, we need to shut you down. What would you tell them to convince them to stay open? Oh God, I don't know. I don't think I need to stay open if aliens were here. I mean, the world's going to change. Are they conquering let's us? Say, I don't know. Let's see. You got to convince them. I need to stay open and here's why. I just invite them in my house and have Harley not wear a shed defender. <laughs> there you and go. They'd probably be pretty convinced. They would say, put that thing on. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Let's talk about design. Cool stuff, different colors. Uh, do you have anybody designing your product? Uh, who helps you with that? Um, I guess I'm the designer. Okay. So I did, I mean, I had a pattern maker help me, kind of gave him the directions of what to do, and it continually evolves. I'm still always kind of manipulating the pattern to fit better and better. Um, but yeah, I tell them what I want, and then, you know, it's all digital. They go on their computer, and they can, you know, adjust this and do this. So yeah, it's a lot of kind of just 
testing it out, see if it works, go back to the drawing board, uh, a lot of back and forth. It doesn't change much, does it? Or are you continually evolving the design? It doesn't say? change that much, but it's just hard with so many different size dogs, even with right. nine sizes, they all don't fit like they don't perfectly. Fit. They, some dogs are perfect, some dogs are tough. So, you know, we did evolve into making a sport version that doesn't zip up all the way. So then the dog I can see. actually go to the bathroom outside, things like that. So we evolved the product to, you know, kind of cater to different uses, but uh, in a sense, no, it, it stays to its core pattern. Okay. So as far as your product manufacturing, who, who does that? And uh, can you walk us through just a quick evolution of getting a new product into mass production? Um, yeah, it's quite the process, um, but now we manufacture overseas. We do some domestic manufacturing okay. as well. So we'll have some small releases, different patterns, um, fun patterns. We do like camo print, leopard print, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, bulk of it's from overseas just due to pricing costs. Mm -hmm. You just really can't get it done here, unfortunately, for the price you'd, you'd want to do it. Or if you didn't, someone else would probably do it for cheaper. Hopefully that'll change soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's tough. So you got to get, you know, for the Shed Defender, you got to make the patterns, you got to get them digitalized and then you send that over. And from there, they can pretty much kind of figure it out, but you got to help them source the zippers. So we have like custom YKK zippers, um, the right thread. There's a lot of little details you got to give them. Right. You know, we have a good pattern maker who kind of helped us source all that stuff to begin with. And mm -hmm. then, you know, our manufacturer going to source those things overseas as well and kind of mimic what we have here. What have you learned by running a business through FBA, right? Any tips, tricks uh, in terms of just really maximizing your profits within that platform? Yeah, I mean, at least the good thing about FBA is they do it for you. I mean, you send your product in, you don't have to worry about shipping and returns. It's all automated. So it's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely helps you out in a lot of ways like that. But for tips and tricks of anything, I would just make sure if you're gonna be on it too, find a good agency that you can help uh, market with their sponsored brands within Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, you gotta put some money into it, but the returns are really good if you do it right. So they can really help jumpstart the business. How do you manage inventory when it's handled by a different company? Um, what, 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 what can you say on that? Amazon makes it pretty easy. Um, so I have my main fulfillment center here in LA. Okay. And when I need to uh, replenish my inventory for FBA, mm -hmm. I just send a bulk order in, you know, whatever it's 500 units, 2000 units into one warehouse that's close to where my fulfillment center is. And then from there, they disperse it throughout their network. So it so makes you, it super simple. You can see what's left though. Uh, oh yeah, you keep okay. track. There's inventory alerts. They can forecast for you. So, uh, you know, what's trending. So, I mean, they give you the tools that you need to uh, help you out and make sure you don't run into any hiccups and right. inventory issues. Hence, you pay them, what, the 15%? Exactly. To, to provide all that services. Okay. Yeah. What about product delays from manufacturers? You know, when you depend on those guys to produce a certain amount of inventory, yeah, that's how, does that impact, how does that impact your relationship with customers? How do you deal with that? Yeah, we've had that issue a lot. And they were from the first manufacturing run we did because we already had a thousand people waiting. Yeah, so I kept taking orders when I probably shouldn't have. <laughs> and my seamstress making one a day or five a day couldn't keep up. So yeah, constant contact, no pressure, emailing right? them, you know, telling them. But yeah, you gotta expect delays. And I usually have a hard time with like thinking, okay, it's gonna be here at this time. It's always weeks later, months later. So you just have to keep that in mind. So ordering correctly, forecasting, mm -hmm. and just expecting the unexpected. You know, with COVID, everything slowed down so much. Um, so shipping was delayed. Um, so you just gotta be realistic about it and make mm -hmm. sure your customers are aware. You know, that hey, shipping might be slow due to COVID. As long as you're transparent with your customers, that's the most important thing. What do you do for like pre-launch for new products? Any kind of special advertisement? How early do you start on that? 
that's always a tough one because that goes back to planning and expecting delays too. Um, okay. Say for the soft shoes that we're developing. We're launching that this week. So anything from getting the website ready, your Amazon listing, getting the product pictures, which is a big one, and getting you know, all the info and description out there. So we're just gonna launch, we have an email campaign that we're gonna blast to all our customers. We have SMS text blast that we can email them. Nice. And then um, paid social as well. Um, the traditional you know, advertising markets or uh, channels that we're doing right now, we're just gonna kind of blow that up and get the brand awareness out there. Like day of or a week before? <laughs> Pretty is much timing important? Tomorrow is probably the first day we'll take sales. Okay. So that's probably the same day we'll do you know, all our email blasts and everything. We don't have a huge launch day and make like a huge deal about it necessarily. It's okay. just mainly getting our current customers aware of it. And then from there, we'll get some brand awareness sent out into the world via social media and that. You've been featured also on some really cool um, publications, you know, mm -hmm. Mashable, BuzzFeed, yeah. Today.com. Yeah. How did those things happen? How did they impact the business? Uh, what can you share about that? I mean, really, once again, it's just getting lucky because I mean, people see our product and first they think it's a joke. They don't know what it is. <laughs> so, I mean, that helps us out with like, you know, just advertising, just viral videos. So BuzzFeed, they reached out to me and I thought I was doing a phone interview. And next thing you know, Zoom popped up and I didn't, I wasn't prepared at all. I just woke up, all my hair's a mess That's and crazy. stuff, but it was like a 15 minute like video, but ended up getting like 18 million views. That they aired? They didn't tell yeah. you they were gonna call you in the morning when you're waking up or anything? Um, I, you know what? It was the first year we were in business and I didn't really know what I was doing <laughs> in life or with the business, so like, I was not prepared, but it still became, yeah, a viral video and it was, it was great. Just getting lucky with these social media sites online is just, Awesome. Do you see a huge boost in sales after yeah. those things? Oh yeah, it was in June of I think 2017 and it definitely it was a great month for us. It doesn't hurt to, to keep getting more of those exposures. Oh, it's great. It definitely winds down now. We don't get too many of them because you know people are kind of aware of our brand and know what it is now. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, occasionally, sometimes you know something comes out and you know maybe like upflip. So yeah. there you go. It helps you know get it out there for us. It's great. Awesome. There's a lot, obviously, to this whole process, right? Yeah. I'm just curious how we could break it down into to, to the three to four most important pillars for viewers watching right now, and just wondering, man, how do I get my product into XYZ, even my own store? What would you say those three, four things are that stand out? So finding a good manufacturer is definitely the first thing you need to do, obviously, to okay. actually get it done. Someone that's gonna be reliable, you can trust, and obviously where the price is right. Um, As a new person, I want to barge in here. As a new person, where what, where would I go to find a, a good manufacturer on that first step? Okay. I got lucky. They reached out to me on Facebook, the manufacturer that we use. You just keep getting lucky. It is. Well, they saw us on one of the viral videos, and he reached out, and it ended up being great. I flew over to Hong Kong and met them, wow. did a tour. Um, really great people. What else besides supplier? I guess let's touch on one more important aspect of um, Obviously, I think just the website and getting the whole business put together. Okay. So the website's key, you know, even if you're not gonna do your own website, you still gotta, on Amazon, you gotta do, you know, a brand store, from pictures to presenting your product in a professional way. Um, you just, you wanna legitimize it. You know, when we first launched, sometimes we had some bad pictures. <laughs> well, you know, our website was clunky, it was horrible. So after we kind of fixed that up, you could see our conversion rate go from less than like 1%. Now we're trending over 3% conversion rate on our website, which is pretty good. What's been the best selling product so far? And uh, is it what you expected? Yeah, it is. It's still our core onesie, original onesie. Mm -hmm. So the black onesie sells far better than any other color. Um, so that's still number one, but we do have products that are trending upwards from the bungee leash to our Shed Defense shampoo. Mm -hmm. Those are just this year starting to boom. Um, you know, that's why we're sold out of our Shed Defense shampoo. We got more coming in a few weeks, same thing that's with good. the leash. So those two products are really picking up and then we'll see how the soft shoes go. Those might rival the onesie, so. There you go, we hope, yeah. it, we hope it does, Tyson. 
curious to know about COVID times as well. Mm -hmm. uh, impacted a lot of businesses. Some failed, closed down. Others adapted, and and they were flexible. You certainly did. The yeah. latter. Uh, what are some tips and tricks? How did you survive? What would you suggest to other businesses that kind of adapted? Yeah. Uh, um, I mean, you got to be flexible with your business. For us, it was kind of lucky just because we're mainly online anyways. Okay. So you know, we were. Our focus was to get into brick and mortar this last year, but obviously COVID, you know, threw us for a loop. So mm -hmm. we pivoted back to just focusing on Amazon, Chewy.com, and our own site, um, and just focusing on like what we have going already instead of wasting our time and money expanding into a market that is kind of obsolete at the moment. We'll see right. if it bounces back. So you're talking about like retail. Yeah. Brick the and retail mortar. brick and mortar. So that just might not be a thing we get into. We might look at it later, but yeah, we just kind of reeled in everything that we we're doing and just focused on, you know, our core business online. To our viewers, uh, whether they're in the same industry or another industry, any tips of advice from an entrepreneur to entrepreneur? Um, anything comes to mind? Um, yeah, I mean, first of all, it's kind of cliche, but don't give up. I got laughed at for creating a dog onesie for years before it actually went big. Yeah, you just got to keep going with it and you know, don't care about what other people think. Eventually, if it's a good product, you know, it'll go. People understand it and, you know, then you'll have your own success story. All right, you guys, as always, we have an offer for you from Tyson. Tyson, tell us more about it. Um, yeah, so we have a coupon code that you can use at checkout for 20% off. Wow. Just type in upflip at sheddefender.com. Awesome. Thank you so much. Very generous of you. You guys take advantage of that and do it right now. Thank you. Well, we really enjoy this. I know our audience have as well. Thank you so much, Tyson. And Thank we you. wish you all the success. Appreciate it. That there ever is. Thank you. Well, that's it for today, you guys. I know you want to watch more. We've got a lot more coming for you. We appreciate you watching this video. What an incredible invention. Execute on all the ideas we talked about. Hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of our amazing content. We're doing this for you. Comment below because we read all the comments. We want to know who you want us to interview next. Thank you so much for watching.